Hi, my name is Lewis Beck and I'm here at 343 Labs in New York City and today I'm going to be talking to you about the principles of techno. Techno is a term that is used to describe a very wide variety of music and so that's why we decided to make this video not about how to make techno because that wouldn't really make sense. There's so many different styles and genres and subgenres and sounds and possibilities you can do with it. What we're going to do instead is talk to you about some of the basic principles that actually flow through almost all forms of techno. As far as techno goes in the history of the genre, these days people maybe associate techno with Adam Bear and Drum Code and Maceo Plex and such artists and maybe Octopus Recordings, but the truth is, is that when it started out, it started out in Detroit and the basis of it was using drum machines and it was manipulating drum machines and sequencing synthesizers and working those in real time to create the sound of techno. And so, to that extent, I thought it would make the most sense to kind of mimic that style of production and that approach to the creative process of techno. I'm going to try to make it sound as modern as possible, but I'm going to kind of draw on it in a more classical way in terms of approaching it in a production sense. So what I've got here is a basic 909 kick, which is the foundation blocks of the origins of techno. The 909 is really what started it all when Juan Atkins got his first 909 from, I believe it was... Frankie Knuckles over in Chicago, actually, which was a house thing. Next, we got a little 808 snare, right? And the cool thing about doing this in the computer is that if I wanted to do this back in the day, I'd need a 909 and an 808, which would cost a little bit of money, but now I can just yank in these samples. So I have this 808 snare, a hi-hat from an 808, a low tom from an 808, and a mid tom from an 808. And so I'm basically gonna show you that you can make techno only using these things in terms of your rhythmic stuff, and then we'll look at how you could use some instrumentation as well. The first thing I should say about techno, and which is probably a, a widespread misconception, is that it, it does not have to be four on the floor. In fact, there's a lot of really exceptional techno that is more breaky and uses a little bit more experimental rhythmic placements for the kick drum. And so I'm actually partial to that style of techno. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna kind of show you how to approach it from that way. And also gonna show you what it feels like to throw a four on the floor kick under it and show you how it's a very different experience. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start with an 808 groove, a groove for my 808 toms. So as opposed to starting with the kick drum, which a lot of producers do, uh, what I like to do is I like to create some sort of core rhythm or core groove that I then can build around. And I usually just really improvise it, uh, just kind of hear the sounds, try to feel out some nice rhythm that I can find. So I'm gonna hit record, and I kind of approach this with no plan. So I'm also going to speed up this project quite a bit. Uh, 120 for what I'm trying to do right now is a little slow. So I'm able to pull this up to 127. And I'm gonna go ahead and quantize what I just played in. For techno, you know, we're not necessarily looking for free, organic feeling rhythms. It is very much about having a little bit more of a stilted, rigid feel. That doesn't mean you can't have organic sounding techno, but uh, particularly for this style of what I'm doing, that this we're gonna quantization is gonna be very key. So we'll hear what I played right at this faster pace, and it immediately evokes some sort of rhythm. Right now, the key whether it's house music or techno, really any form of rhythmic based music, even if you're writing funk, is once you have your core groove, that should be your master reference in terms of how to then build a rhythm off of that. One of the biggest mistakes that newer producers make is they think that each element has to be doing its own thing. But really what it should be is each element should be contributing in some, some way to a singular groove that then is conveyed as this larger feeling groove. And so what we can do is we can use different instruments at different times to emphasize different points of the groove. And that's a big part of what I'm also gonna be doing. So I start out with this tom groove and I'm actually going to duplicate the track and record what I do next on a new track. And I'm gonna do that with this hi-hat. Now, obviously, again, my playing is not that brilliant, 
but with the magic of quantization, we should get what I was going for somewhere in there. Yeah, so that last one sounded like what I was going for. So what, we'll, what we hear, right, is that if we look at the, the MIDI for the toms, and then we come back and look at the MIDI for the hi-hats, the, the points of emphasis are dancing off each other and overlapping, right? So we have this eighth note that's being hit in the toms. It's the same eighth note that's being hit in the hi-hat, right? And so what I'm doing with the hi-hat is I'm doing what's called syncopation. So I'm filling in little offbeat moments to kind of fill out the groove and make it dance even more. Now again, I'm gonna duplicate the track and of course labeling is very important. So I'll call this my tom groove, hi-hat. And then I'm gonna actually do my kick work here. So again, hit record and then just kind of feel it out. So the way that I at least personally like to approach writing grooves for electronic music, whether it be house or techno, is I kind of take this approach of your groove should be four four bars long and it should mostly be the same but you should slightly change it at the end of the second bar and the fourth bar so if we listen we have we have so we have doom 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 right so one and three are the same but two and four are a slight variation Now, one contemporary production technique that's used very, very often in techno is using reverb on your kick drum. So I'm actually gonna drag some reverb on there, but this is very important. I'm not gonna actually have it be directly on it. So I'm gonna create an audio effect track. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna process the reverb in parallel. So I'm gonna have my dry signal I'm gonna have my reverb signal. And for this technique, you always wanna have your wet at 100%. And I'm gonna have a fairly low decay time. I don't, I don't want a super long decay time, right? Because if you put reverb on groove elements, on rhythmic elements, what happens is, is your ear is actually going to interpret the note as lasting for the length of time that the reverb lasts. So you can take something that's very tight and interesting and make it actually a little bit too like ridey or rolling as we would call it. If we solo out just the kick drum for a moment and listen to just the reverb, the other thing that I'm gonna want is to have it be mono, straight down the middle. And I'm gonna to wanna to cut out the highs. So that's what I want, this deep kind of industrial sound. So when I unsolo it, right, that's without it. It's subtle, but it really fills it out and makes it a little more aggressive. Now if we listen to it in context, without the reverb, right? What this does is, it kind of fills in that space behind, between the kick drum and the toms, like it's right, in between, right behind the mix. And maybe I'll even uh, put on a saturator after it. Just to get a little bit of grit and grain out of it. I want to turn everything down a little bit because I'm clipping, that's not fun. All right, cool. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now record my snare. And as opposed to recording it actually, this time I'm gonna draw it in. And so everything here right now is, you know, kind of doing its own little unique groove. It's sort of breaky, right? There's, it's not what we would immediately identify with a classic four on the floor style of thing. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna create an element that 
juxtaposes that something that very rigidly is saying these are the beats that we're using, right? So I'm going to put my snare on every 16th note. But what I'm going to do is, let's first listen to what that sounds like. Which is cool, there's no doubt. But it's also like a little intense. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to adjust the velocity on these. So where the hi-hat normally would fall, which is a point of emphasis, I'm actually going to de-emphasize those moments. And what's strange about that is that it'll actually make the, the, the groove revolve around that spot more. By virtue of the actual absence of the snare there, it actually makes us lean into it more. So the one way to do it, right, is to put a hi-hat there to emphasize it, but the other way to actually do it is to kind of create a cavity around that spot. Now, I'm gonna duplicate this loop, and again, right, I'm looking for four bars, and even though this is all 16th notes, there's still a small amount of variation that I can do. So right here, I'm gonna do a bit of a, a roll, because that's, that tends to be kind of cool with this style of music. And you know, this is a bit of a nod to like Richie Houghton, Plastic Man. And so maybe that spot wasn't the right spot for it. So I'll move these over, bring this guy over here. Now let's listen. Maybe this is too long of a roll in general. Just need a short one. Yeah, so now again, I'm going to duplicate this loop. And a big part of techno is trying to subvert expectations. And so instead of having the roll be in the same spot, I'm just going to actually move it to the start of this earlier bar. So what will happen is, is and, and the thing is, is a lot of times with techno, actually, a certain degree of randomness is quite, quite nice. Because we, we almost want people to, to be engaged with this mechanical groove that is also somewhat unpredictable. I think that's what humanizes techno more than anything. So I'm pretty satisfied with that for the snare. So let's call that snare. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a synth step. It's probably make it a chord step. I'll just drag on analog from Ableton. And with, with techno, I'd say the most common chord is gonna be a, just a minor chord. Kind of feeling that one. Now, again, for techno, reverb is just so important. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag reverb onto this channel. I like that groove. I don't want to re-record it, so this is where MIDI capture comes in super handy, right? I'm just gonna click that, and then everything that I just played comes in. This is probably one of my favorite things about Ableton. And again, just gonna quantize that. And now maybe I'll come in and edit the chord sound itself a little bit. I want it to be a little stabbier. Maybe add a little LFO to the, the filter. Now again, 
because of that kind of randomness and chaos that I think is real good techno utilizes, I'm not going to have my rate uh, tied to a note value. I want it to be floating. I want it to be unpredictable. I want it to always be slightly off and always eventually be slightly on, right? It's what propels things forward with techno is the fact that n things almost never land where they're quite supposed to. There should always be one element that's rolling off the rest of the groove a little bit. All right, so now that I have most of the groove written, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go ahead and drag it to arrangement view. And now I'm going to loop it out for 33 bars. And I'm gonna show you how you actually would go about arranging a techno song. Now, I'm not gonna get into the details of how you start and you know where which sound you wanna start with and all this, but a big part of it actually is trying to emulate the usage of a drum machine to be able to actually physically and manually make changes to some of your sounds. So what I'm going to do is I've actually set up my hi-hat and my snare so that I can manipulate them sort of as if they were in a um, drum machine. It's not going to be quite the same feeling, but you'll kind of get the idea. So I'm going to MIDI map the release time on my hi-hat to a knob. And I'm also going to mini map the decay time on a reverb for my snare. And so what that's going to hopefully do is sort of imitate my ability to make a snare's release longer on a drum machine. And so messing with these release values is really cool and can be very fun. So I'll show you what that alone just sounds like playing with those. First, I'll start with the hi-hat. Right? So just that little bit of making it push and pull and come in right, is a big part of making this work. So I'm actually going to put the saturator on the hi-hat just because if you sometimes overly saturate something, yeah, you can add a little bit of more like... Uh, weight to these longer release values. So I'll do that with the hi-hat. So now from the snare drum, I'm going to control this reverb decay time to make it seem like it's sort of getting a little bit longer. Now again, I'm actually going to put the saturator on after it to exaggerate the effect of that happening. So you can hear how it makes it a little bit more alive when I do that. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on automation record and I'm actually going to perform my hi-hat part and my snare part. So first I'm going to make sure that they sound the way I want them to starting naturally. Cool. So what you're going to listen for right now is how I'm actually changing this release time on the hat and the snare alternatively. So I'm just gonna hit record and then go for it.
So at the end of that now, if we press A, right, and we just look at what I recorded, you can actually see the performance that I did. And so we'll listen back to that now and see what it added. Right, so you can already hear from just listening to that part that we get this sense of motion and pushing and pulling and this is a big part of what we want. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing for my chord stabs. Except this time I'm going to map my cutoff for the chords. Now the reason I'm doing all this mapping and doing all this live performance is because the way that I normally go about making techno is I have physical drum machines and physical synthesizers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this MIDI or take these patterns that I've made, right? And I'm going to hit record and I'm just going to improvise and just feel all these changes that I'm trying to do. And that's what's going to inject that, the music with life. So real quick, so you can just hear. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to really adjust. And then I'll actually also map the release time because that's always fun to play with as well. So if we play it back now. So that's what I'm right now looking to work with. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and hit record and kind of just feel this out. So if we now go back and listen to what this chord adjustment, right, this like little filter play and release play uh, added to the recording, we can hear it. And you'll notice when I've been doing this, right, is that it starts off a little more tame and slowly gets crazier and crazier and crazier, right? You can almost think of it like soloing on an instrument where you get deeper and deeper into the feeling of it. Now again, adjusting the release time is really beneficial because what happens is, as we discussed earlier, is that when you make the release time really long on a note, right, it makes the actual rhythmic moment last a lot longer, right? So it changes the actual feeling of the groove for the listener. So what we really are trying to do with any form of techno is create a groove that is, is driving and compelling, but then actually mess with the feeling of accentuation and where the moments are being presented and how the whole groove is kind of functioning. So a lot of times we're pushing it forward with a lot of energy and then pulling it back and pushing it and pulling it. And that's kind of what it's all about. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial on the basic principles of techno. Again, my name is Lewis Beck and I'm here at 343 Labs in New York City. If you enjoyed the video, please click the subscribe link below to see more videos on our channel. And if you're interested in taking classes and learning more about the courses that we offer online as well, please visit our website.